been brought to you by the Matter Way. All right, folks, so here we go with our penultimate edition of the ABCs of archaeology, and that would be Y. And here, Y is for Y chromosome. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. This is an archaeology show, not a science program. Well, believe it or not, Y chromosomes are incredibly important for archaeogenetics. And even though recent advances in science that are allowing for whole genome sequencing have made them a little less important, Y chromosomes are still pretty useful and pretty cool. So let's dive right in, shall we? 180, 34 years of age, Jeremy Will! All right, so advances in genetics have come fast and furious in recent years. I mean, I'm old enough to remember when the human genome was first sequenced because it happened on my 21st birthday, April 14th, 2003. And as you may know, for Americans, 21 is a big birthday. So on second thought, I'm not sure how much of that day I remember, but that's another talk. Anyway, the fact that genetics are so much in the news and sort of the common parlance that people throw around genetic terms a lot without really understanding fully what they mean. So let's get into that and cover some of the basics to make sure we're all on the same page. All right, so there are genes, and they are made up of specific sequences of DNA, that double helix thing that stores all the information about you. Now, the shape of that, that double helix, that was discovered by Watson and Crick in 1953, uh, a discovery for which they later won the Nobel Prize. And fun fact, a lot of the ADNA um, stuff that I talk about actually comes from the Francis Crick Institute, which is like a 15-minute walk from here, named, of course, after Crick of Watson and Crick. If you recall, we interviewed one scientist from their ancient genomics lab, Johnny Depp. Anyway, so sequences of DNA make up genes, and strands of genes make up chromosomes, and we human beings have 23 chromosomal pairs, uh, a side of which comes from the mother and a side of which comes from the father. 22 of these pairs are known as autosomes, which look the same in both males and females. However, the 23rd pair is known as the sex chromosome, and that's XX for females and XY for males. So the mothers contribute the X part and the fathers contribute the Y part. And that's where these Y chromosomes come in. They're the part of the sex chromosome that is contributed solely by the father and it's only present in males. And there's some unique things about this Y chromosome. For example, unlike the X chromosome and I think all other chromosomes, the Y doesn't really undergo recombination. It doesn't really exchange genetic material with other chromosomes, except in some very limited areas that it interacts with the X. So it remains largely intact, even when an egg is fertilized and the XY come together. So this lack of change makes it super useful for tracing paternal lineage and also looking for direct descent from male ancestors. And despite the Y chromosome being such a window into the past, one benefit of studying it is it's relatively simple. You see, the human genome has 20,000 to 25,000 genes. The X chromosome has 800 to 1,100, whereas the Y chromosome only has 50 to 200 genes. And that wide variance depends on sort of how you count the things technically. Man's practicing fuzzy math again. So that makes the Y chromosome much easier to study and gives you a lot more bang for the buck. So in early DNA studies, before we got all this latest technology that has made sequencing so much faster and cheaper, a lot of them focused on the Y chromosome. For example, check out these two papers I used for my dissertation, which come way back from the early 2000s, before the full genome was sequenced, and even after in the early years that it was, it still remained very, very difficult to do. But now, as whole genome sequencing is becoming quicker and cheaper, latest estimates I've heard for ancient DNA might be 1,000 to 1,500 pounds for a whole uh, genomic sequencing. 
there's less emphasis on just the Y chromosome or for that matter, the mitochondrial DNA, which is also contributed solely by the mother. However, this is not at all to say that Y chromosomes are not useful and are no longer being studied. Oh. And in fact, given that it changes so little over time, the Y chromosome analysis is still important in projects that are trying to understand family lineage and also in kinship studies. These are topics that I care a lot about and am likely to focus my PhD on, so I have to keep uh, on top of the latest literature, like these papers, for example. Here's one focusing on kinship in an early medieval cemetery in Germany, and it conducted Y chromosome analysis to find two distinct lineages in the cemetery. And this is, again, very relevant to what I'm working on now. So yeah, Y chromosomes still very helpful in understanding archaeogenetics, and through that getting a better sense of how societies and kinship structures formed. So I hope now you can see the relevance to archaeology, and that wasn't too sciencey for you. So there you have it, Y for Y chromosomes. Hey, if you like what you heard, give me that thumbs up below, hit that bell to subscribe, or if you want to support more independent archaeology content, consider contributing to my Patreon, where you can enjoy some exclusive members-only benefits and other goodies. Until the next dig.